doing well. I just want to jump on and praise and to prophesy over you today. I'm here in the beautiful Colorado Springs. Um, it's summer. It's I, I can't believe this climate. It's incredible. But I have something I want to pray and prophesy over you today. It feels like the body of Christ right now is in this place of waiting or in delay because we're needing to begin to build and to begin to create the infrastructure for this next move. And I believe it's already been taking place. Um, but so many of us are in this place where we're, our vision is so much larger than what we currently have in our hands. It's like God is, is really stirred up the dreamers. He stirred up the prophetic strategists. He stirred up the hearts of the apostles, the parts of the evangelists. And you're in this place right now. It's like my vision and what God's given me, he's placed on the inside of me, this blueprint is massive. But what I have in my hands to be able to build that thing is not it's not quite the same. There's this huge disparity between the two. And the Lord right now is wanting to see the provision and the resources released to be able to build those things. This is a really unusual video for me to do. I don't talk about money very often. I don't talk about finances that often. Um, people even ask me, they say it's very difficult to even find a place to sow into, into our ministry because it's just, I just don't talk about that topic all the time. But I really truly believe this is something we need to talk about right now because so many are in this place that the enemy is warring up your seed and he's warring after the provision you need to be able to build right now that's why the enemy is warring at you this is this is the phrase that came to me this morning it's it's like this the enemy is warring at your provision because he's afraid of what you're going to build to the lord he's afraid of what you're about to construct because it will be the clashing of kingdoms right now it feels like the enemy He's got his hands firmly grasped on the finance of the world. It is in the, it is in the hands of the wicked. The finances in the world, the, the, even the financial mountain is well and truly in the hands of the wicked. But that is being loosed even right now as we speak. Even as we prophesy today, the Lord's beginning to loose that. I believe we're in a time of the greatest end times wealth transfer. And we need it, not because we need money. We need resource. We need that which will build, okay? The love of money is wrong, but when, when you see money as something that is, is, is like bricks and mortar, when you see money as a, a and finance as something that, will you, that you can use to build and construct what God has given you, then it, you look at it completely different. And right now we're in a deficit and we need to see the release of it. I think it was about three months ago, the Lord spoke to me about the Prince of Persia. There was a principality that was that was holding back the finances for the body of Christ. Like Daniel was in that, in that place where he prayed and he asked the Lord, and he said, Lord, you know, he, he, was, he was contending for something. And that's when the, the angel of the Lord said, hey, from the moment you prayed, the Lord heard your prayer. But for, for all this time, the angel of the Lord was held back because of this prince of Persia. And the prince of Persia was coming to twist and to try to create red tape and delay to stop the finances, or sorry, in that situation, to stop the breakthrough coming to Daniel. This right now is where we are at in the body of Christ. The Lord has been releasing blueprints. He's been releasing his heart to his people. He's been releasing those plans. He's been releasing even the even the uh, even the, the the building plans, even just down to the finest details. But so many are frustrated because they're like, "How God? How can I move forward? How can I begin to construct that which you have given me?" It looks like, and this is what I heard this morning. The phrase is this. It feels like in the Ecclesiastes moment this morning I had, I'll just be real with you guys, I literally had this moment, God, it feels like you're dangling a carrot on a stick, but that is the enemy. God does not dangle carrots on sticks for his beloved, okay? He does not do that to us. He does, does not dangle carrots on sticks. God's word is firm. His promise is sure. If he's given you the blueprint, if he's given you the plans, then he is going to give you the finance, the resources to be able to see that thing come to fruition. But Nate, why are you talking about this? I'm talking about this because I believe we're in a place right now that we need to, we need to contend, we need to fast, we need to pray, and we need to stand and stand firm on what God has spoken. I feel like we're in the 11th hour where things are about to break and shift. I'm sharing this right now because this morning, as I was waking up, I saw a vision in my mind, and I'll share a picture of, I found it on, um, on Adobe stock, but I found uh, this picture, this is what I saw. I saw this armada, and it wasn't a huge armada, but it was an armada of, of these ships. 
and these ships were cargo ships and they were, they were coming towards and there was just like there were storms out at sea and there was there was wind and there was waves stopping that finance coming in that the, the resources that was needed to be able to build and i said well what is this and i the only phrase i heard and this is all i heard was the ships of tarshish the ships of tarshish and i'm like why am i hearing this i've, I've maybe heard that word once or twice and never really looked into it so um, i looked into what the ships of tarshish mean and let me just read a few scriptures to you but uh, it, it's an incredible revelation this is what i believe the lord is saying right now over you okay so the ships of tarshish okay um are the ships well it's mentioned many times throughout the bible so it's not it's not actually tied down to one moment of historical time in the bible okay but the ships of tarshish just as a, a background in one particular instance was where solomon had ships that were coming from foreign lands okay and it would bring every three years would bring gold and silver to him okay bring resource to him and that's what actually caused the the, the queen of sheba to go wow what is this favor upon his life that hey he has this kind of wealth what is this favor upon his life that that would cause him to have so much gold and so much silver the interesting thing was in this one passage that speaks about this okay um it says that the ships of Tarshish would start out in a place called, in a port called uh, Isaiah Giba, okay? Which actually means the backbone of man, which really to me speaks about the strength of man. It speaks about our, our ability to create wealth, it's our strength, it's doing things our own might. I believe many of us right now are trying to build even with man's strength, man's intellect, man's, even man's timing sometimes. And I believe God is breaking that right now. The port that that, that, that gold and silver would, would come to was Ophir. And the word Ophir means actually like the coastlines of abundance. It means the place of abundance. And so this is what the Lord is saying through that. We are in a moment of a wealth transfer where like Solomon, in the days of Solomon, the wealth that would be in the hands of the wicked, the wealth that would be in the hands of the unrighteous, the God would be actually using Tarshish. He'd use the ships, the cargo ships of Tarshish, and he'd remove it from the hands of the enemy. He'd remove it from those places where it was being improperly managed and used, and he was bringing it into the body of Christ to be able to cause them to build and create what they're wanting to build and create. So this is what the Lord is saying over you today. Do not give up. Do not give up just because what you're seeing is delayed. Do not give up today because because what you're seeing is red tape. The Lord is breaking the red tape. He's breaking the delays. Okay? He's breaking that which is being held up. And he's bringing it to you. He's bringing it to you. I want to challenge you with something today before we pray. Is get out the promises that God spoke over you. Get out the blueprints. Get out your notebooks. Get out all the things that God spoke over your life. And begin to decree them. Say, God, this is what you promised. Take them into worship and, and get into war mode today. Because this is going to break. Just like the angel of the Lord came and it broke. It defeated the prince of Persia. Yes, there was delay. But it broke. And it shall break upon your life. The Lord is bringing you the finances. I want to paint a bit of a global picture right now for you. There are principalities right now in the earth. I'm not just talking spiritual entities, yes. But these have human names. These have, not human names, these have names to them that you may even know. And these names are empowered by principalities in the earth that are currently controlling and holding these places of wealth and resource. And the enemy does not want to let it go because they are territories for him. And because he wants to see a church that is abundant in vision, but poor in resource. He, let me say that again. He, the enemy is not threatened by a church. I'll say it like this. The enemy is not threatened by a church that has great vision. He's threatened by a church that has great vision, but also has the authority and the purity, by the way, the purity to steward great wealth. Why do I say purity? It takes great purity to steward wealth. Not anybody can steward wealth because, yet again, if you, even as a Christian, don't have the purity to steward the wealth God gives you, it ends up being used then to empower the enemy in his thing. Go have a think about it. It's true. We need purity of heart right now to steward the wealth that's about to come into the body of Christ. The word Tarshish 
actually means refinery. Refineries, so those ships of Tarshish, to be able to receive them at port, the Lord is saying, who has clean hands and a pure heart? And I want to just make one distinction. When I spoke about the about the port of Zion, Gibar, that place of man's backbone, we need to get out of the thinking of poverty mindsets. We need to get out of the place of, of thinking in our own strength, in our own ways. And we need to battle in the heavens over this. And we need to see that our territory is our birthright to be able to steward the wealth of the nations and use it in the correct way. Because it's being used improperly. Even in the church, it's being used improperly. It's being used to, I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to destroy mega churches, but my goodness, there's been such there's been such a huge um, there's been a wrong stewardship of the wealth. And the Lord right now is looking to those who would steward that wealth in the right way. And the Lord is looking for those who've been in the refinery. He's looking for those who've been through the purification. He's looking for those who are right now just on their knees saying, God, these are these are the blueprints you've given me. These are the plans, God. This is what you showed me. Don't leave me on, God. Don't tease me. This is what you promised. And they have a pure heart. They have clean hands and they're before him. And they're not begging. They're petitioning. They're not begging. They're contending because they know there's a wrestle in the spirit because that those principalities do not want to let go of the wealth. That those principalities do not want to let go of what they've been holding onto for far too long. And of all of everything, the enemy just does not want to see the body of Christ step into that kind of authority and stewardship. Because he knows that once the body of Christ begins to connect this and grab the keys of provision, not I'm not talking prosperity gospel in the twisted way man's done it. I'm talking in the way that we are meant to have an inheritance from our father. We're meant to have an inheritance from our father. Okay? This is not about prosperity in the sense that we've seen it. This is about inheritance. Think about health and wholeness. Do you see that as your inheritance? Yes. Is it your inheritance to be able to step into your mantle and prophesy and see demons flee? To have authority over devils? Yes. Why is it any different when it comes to finance? Pick up your keys again today, body of Christ. Are you laying in a place of defeat? Are you laying in a place where you feel like you are powerless and authorityless today? Grab your keys. Begin to get into that place of of being a warrior bride for God and saying, God, I called in that which is mine. You give me the vision. I knew you're going to give me the provision to fill it today, Lord God. And Lord, just give me a heart check, like shift my heart, God. Maybe where I've been seeing this in the wrong way, in a poverty mindset. I feel like even the Lord's saying today, you've been dreaming too small. You've been dreaming too small. We've been through this in this last season. We've been dreaming too small. The Lord's been confronting areas of small-mindedness. And it's like when things don't work out the way you imagined, you begin to go into a place of, of almost like dumbing down the vision God's given you. And you start, you start kind of splitting up and subdividing the promise until it's into bite size where you can actually manage and do it on your, in your own strength. And yet again, you're falling back into the place of a fear where you are relying on your own backbone, your own strength, your own ability to accomplish the vision of God in your life. And the Lord's saying, that is not what I've called you to. It must look impossible. Your vision must look impossible. If your vision doesn't need God to come up in a miracle, in, in like if you don't need a miracle of God, then your vision is not big enough. If you don't need a miracle of God in the area of provision right now, then you are not dreaming big enough. Amen, Charles. Disciples of all nations. This is about nations. And God is looking for a remnant right now that would say, God, use me. Bring in the wealth to me. Bring in what, what you need to bring in to me because I will steward it open-handedly, God. I want to be a funnel that would flow through. I want your finance to simply be, I will be a conduit of that finance, not a, not a holder or some kind of gatekeeper, you know, not, not like the, uh, what's off the hobbit, the, um, that dragon who was just sitting and sleeping on that amassed mouth of wealth. God is looking for those that will be conduits of glory and conduits of that finance. And the Lord says today, the gold is mine, the silver is mine. And you watch as he begins to shift those things around you today. Stand on his promises. And Lord, we just right now thank you. We thank you, Lord, that the ships are coming. 
The cargo ships of your, of your provision are coming to us today, Lord. The cargo ships of your provision are coming to us today, God. I just feel like the Lord's breaking weariness off people that have been contending weariness today. He's breaking off those mindsets like I even had. God, are you dangling a carrot on a stick? I just break those no. thoughts, those mentalities, those lies of the enemy. And yes, I'm swinging on a kid swing, by the way. It's the only shady place in this yard, but it's really comfy. And uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm rocking like Blue Angle, but I'm swinging instead. Jesus, we thank you today for your provision. We thank you for your provision, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are right now loosening the finance off those principalities, God. You're breaking it from their hands even today in Jesus' mighty name. We rebuke where every single demon, every single assignment, Lord, every single entity in the spirit realm that is holding onto the finance that is meant for the, the body of Christ be released today in Jesus' mighty name. I feel like the Lord's even today, he's just hurrying things along that have been delayed. He's hurrying things along. It's not like I kept seeing like something skipping, like skipping, skipping. And it's like God is skipping processes and he's skipping to someone today that is on here and you're believing for finance and some kind of settlement in some court case. And the Lord is he's skipping the processes. There's been some delays in the area uh, where it's, there's, there's, been some, um, there's been some actual paperwork error and the Lord is breaking through the paperwork error and he's skipping over even today lord release it in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus i feel like there are people here uh you meant to bring your plans out go get your notebooks out like i said before lay your hands on them take authority and say nothing shall stop the plans of god that he's given me come to pass but we thank you lord for that today in the mighty name of jesus there are people on here going well, that's all great but i'm just believing for rent I'm just believing. I feel like the Lord today is shifting mindsets. I break the poverty spirit now in Jesus' mighty name. You can, hey, can I tell you something? I was brought up in one of the most poorest parts of Australia. Okay, every second home in my street was a government-owned home. Everyone's in debt. I, I had credit cards when I was in my teens. I didn't know how to manage or steward money. And then God shifted it in me. It's called getting a wife that told me it so ridiculously and used to offend me actually and then god used that to begin to shift my mindset christy would be christy was this person i was like oh man we're, we're gonna go broke but we were already broke so it didn't matter and we'd be we'd be going to places and god will put people on our hearts to sew into and i would say for instance i'll get this figure i go oh man it's all we have in our account but i'm like i'm hearing the lord say you know um two hundred dollars and christy's like hey we'll go sell that thing and give them 400 we're meant to give them 400 i'm like oh my god this is offending me we need to shift our mindset so God is breaking debt. He's breaking those ceilings that are being over you by man's systems. Debt, man's systems, okay? Breaking over you. You are not meant to live under the ceilings of debt. You're meant to be the lender, not the borrower. So I just decree over you today that you'll be the lender, not the borrower. And that you'd step in a crazy faith today that will offend you, not just for your vision, but even your daily life and the way you sow. I tell you something, Christy and I have a list. Can I be really real? We have a list um, of people that we are, uh, we've written amounts, we've prayed, we've written down these people that we're sowing into, and we've written amounts down next to their names, and they're ridiculous amounts of money. They're more, they're more, it's more than we have in our accounts, okay? Um, we need to be thinking like that. We are conduits. If you're thinking like, I need money just to be able to do my thing, then that already is going to be insufficient, okay? You are limiting God of what he wants to bring into your life. He wants to bring the money that's going to not only fulfill the vision on your life, but the bulk of it's going to keep going past you, through you, and be out there sowing into other people and what they're doing in the kingdom of God. Lord, I pray for a fire. I pray for a refinery to hit us in the area of finance, God. I pray, Lord God, that you would cause our hearts to see your heart on this. And we break out of poverty mindsets today, Lord. And Lord, that this would break. This would break. That the golden bowls, the bowls of heaven, Lord God, would tip today. Even the area of finance, Lord God. The, the, the prayers of the saints, God, that have been petitioning you for the release of provision would be released today. In Jesus' mighty name, the gates of hell will not prevail against. It will not prevail against this, God. We need the 
provision. This isn't a silly thing to pray for. We need the provision to fulfill the vision. And we just decree that. I prophesy that right now, Lord, Lord, over every single person watching this in Jesus' mighty name. I see the buildings. God's wanting to give people buildings debt-free so you don't have to keep worrying about tithes and offerings to try to keep those things afloat. God's giving people the barns. He's giving people the land. He's giving you the homes you need to be able to invite people over, to gather together and be the church of Acts. This is what this is all about. God is raising up those who will be stewards. I just see like even, you know, this has been something I talk about a lot, but like ranches and places of healing, developing, like where, where people get to connect, fellowship, the family of God coming together. God is wanting you to step into your next season and next chapter and you need the finance to be able to do it i decree that over you today in jesus mighty name lord i thank you for the testimonies that are going to come forth even this week as red tape and delay breaks the testimonies that are going to come forth this week as red tape breaks in jesus mighty name amen bless you guys have an amazing day my pleasure